Hey, it's Chris. Legion Games. This is going to be the game of all games. The reviews of all reviews. And this is just kind of a short review because it's only about the game. Face to face. Face to face? Face to face. So, this is the latest release from Pandasaurus in terms of iterations of the game. If you're not familiar, let's talk. If you are familiar, let's talk still. What do I think of it? How does it compare? What do you need to know? Pros? Cons? Everything in between? Yeah, that's right. I'm still putting it on my head, even though it's small. Let's do this. So, this is the game, right? Horribly titled, difficult to find when you're looking up, I want to play the game. I want to buy a copy of the game. That aside. I mean, I've talked about that and discussed that enough. I'm sure other people have too. This is the two-player head-to-head version of the game. And if you're not familiar with the game, the original base copy of the game is a one to, I think, five-player game. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong in the comment section. Where you are taking four stacks of cards, two that are ascending, two that are descending. And you have to play cards in order in as small of increment as possible so that you can play all of the cards in the deck because there are cards numbering individually unique in the deck that are distributed among all of the players. And you have a hand of a certain size that you are gradually trying to play from, but being careful because you cannot communicate or the communication between players is very limited. So therein lies the challenge. How far do you have to go with these cards? Because subsequently you have to play cards on your turn. You have to play two cards per turn, no matter what, on one of the said piles. Either the ascending or the descending. The big trick with this game <laughs> is that you can sort of reset the pile in a way, in a sense by placing a card that is 10 in the opposite direction. So if the pile is descending, you could play a card that is 10 higher than the card that is on the top of the pile. So if you have a card, so for example, if I have a card, 50 for example, and I'm going up on the ascending track, and I want to give myself more space because I'm running out of space in terms of the numbers that are higher than this, as well as not sure who's gonna have what, well, then I can play 10 in the opposite direction. And in this case, it would be 40. So now in the ascending pile, you can see how I would have a lot more room. Now in the descending pile, you could have the 40 and then play the 50 because you're trying to go down to one and you'd have a lot more room for those cards. That is the basic gist of this game. You try and get as many cards played as you can. And the number of cards that you have left over in the original base game is, you know, how well you did essentially. So now that we've got the two player version, and again, this is cooperative in the original version, this is head-to-head, -head, face to face, competitive. So how does that change? Well, I mean, this one doesn't even need a lot of gameplay. You have each of your own piles, each of said piles going up from one and down from 60. So they just basically abbreviate it in that sense. And now what is the trick with this game? Same rules as the first one that applies. You have to play at least two cards per turn. But you can play, again, just like the original game, you can play it your whole hand if you really want to. And the trick here is that you play as many as you can on your own, but you have the option to play one card resetting the other person's pile in the way that's going to help them, the opposite manner in which I just described. But you can only play one. And herein also lies the difference. If you only play on your own stacks, you only draw two cards at the end of your turn. If you help your opponent, you can refill your whole hand up to six. And that may sound like a positive, that may sound like a negative. And you're right, because it's both. Because if you can ever not play two cards on your turn, just like the original game, you lose. Otherwise, it's the first person to finish their full stack. That's it. That is the whole game, the game, face to face. So what do I think? I think the first time we got it to the table, it was surprisingly, ah, we're just kind of going along, going along. And then all of a sudden, the light switch kind of goes off halfway, three quarters of the way through the first game. Like, oh, all of a sudden, this is a rush. Like, unlike the original game where you're sort of trying to play as few cards as possible, in this, it is a balanced race, essentially, trying to play as many as you can 
trying to help out your opponent because that's the way you can refill your hand faster because if you play only on your own, you're going to be SOL because you're one, you're not going to go through cards as quickly, potentially, and you're not going to refill your hand as quickly. So then you can be left with very few cards in your hand and very limited play options, potentially making yourself in a very difficult situation or even an end game situation way too early. But it's also balancing being aggressive enough that if the other person is being able to play more, you may just have to play catch up and be aggressive on their piles and help their piles out significantly. And when you choose to help their pile and how much you choose to help their pile or which pile you help out is really the make it or break it. And there is a little bit of luck involved with that. I mean, obviously, this is a card game where you're shuffling and you're drawing and you don't have a whole lot of mitigation. There's only six cards in your hand. So you just need to be aware of that. But did I like it? Heck yeah, I liked it. This is a game that you can easily play in like 10-15 minutes once you get the hang of it. Probably less even, potentially. You can tote it around with you. I mean, the one thing I'll say about this is it's not superfluous. This is what you see and what you get. You could put this in your pocket, two decks of cards, boom, there you go. Pull it out in the restaurant, boom, bring it on a camping trip. Play it with almost anyone that's going to understand this concept. It's not hard. But the nuance is there enough. I mean, I say all of that, but... You may think, okay, well, he was just destined to like this because he really liked the game in the first place. Yeah, I do really like the game in the first place. I think it is an ultimate introducing people to this hobby style of game. And I think this is a great two-player version, but I'll be frank with you. When Pandasaur said they'd send me a copy, I kind of poo-pooed it. I kind of was like, nah, okay, this will be interesting. And if I don't like it, I'll just throw it on the trade pile or something. I'm not throwing it on the trade pile. I'm keeping this. I'm keeping this. This is not going anywhere. Is it the best game? No, it's not the best game out there. Like, your hardcore gamers are not going to like this. But do I like this? Does it fit my needs? Is it something quick and easy I can play with my wife and we can go and bring it wherever we want with us, wherever we're going? Yeah, absolutely. Am I surprised by how much I like this? Yeah, I really am. Like I said, I wasn't expecting to like this half as much as I do. And for the price that something like this costs you nowadays, like 10 15 bucks, whatever... It's worth it. And that's it. I mean, this is going to stay in my collection. However you want to score that. Again, it's not a perfect game. It's a heck of a lot of fun, though. It's a little bit more thinky than I was expecting. And that in a good way, though. And a little bit a little bit too thinky, depending. If you are prone to a little bit of AP, I could see it happening with this. But it's, it's a tight race. To the very end. Head to head. And then you play again. That's it. Told you. Short, sweet, to the point. The game. Face to face. Check it out. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Stay classy.